Jeff Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another build video in the FJ45 Resto Mod series. Today we're going to be working on the frame. So what does that actually mean? Well, as you can see in front of me here, I've got that front cross member cut out. I'm going to be installing a new front cross member from Billy McKinnon's Cruisers, which is a top quality item. We'll get to have a look at that in a second. Going to weld up a couple of cracks in the frame, pretty minor ones. Then I'll spray the frame down with some chassis black and we'll get to assembling the frame in its entirety, getting it ready to drop in that LSA. So come on along on the journey with me guys. Let's see what I've got in store for you today. Let's do this. I've got three cracks to weld up. That's our first one. I've already drilled a hole terminating the crack, so that just needs to be welded now. This is our second crack. It doesn't actually go around the corner there. It just sits on the flap, so that's pretty cool. And this is our third crack, and that's up at the very front horn of the frame. In terms of rust, this front cross member has got some cancer in here. Probably difficult to see with the lighting, but there's cancer here and in this corner. So I'm going to replace that entire cross member. McKinnon's Cruiser sell them. So I'll just take that complete unit out of there and replace it all together. And that's it. That's the extent of the cancer and the cracks in the chassis. So this is the reason that I've chopped out my front frame cross member and am replacing it. After I got it blasted, you can see there's quite a bit of cancer in there. And rather than try and repair that cancer, I got a complete new unit from McKinnon's Cruisers. And it is pretty bloody flash and very solidly built. So I'll unbolt that steering damper mount and I'll move it over onto this McKinnon's Cruisers unit. And then from there, she's ready to bolt up onto the chassis. That's got a few grinder marks here and here. So those nuts have actually been chopped off in the past and replaced. Here's the frame cross member bit that I've chopped out. That sat in between the frame rails like that. And here is the unit from McKinnon's Cruisers. And this is one seriously heavy duty unit. And that now bolts in between the frame rails. Now you can't actually get it to fit by going in sideways like that. So I think what I'm going to have to do is put a couple of straps on either side of the frame rail and basically spread her legs open to be able to slide this in. And I only need to go, oh geez, maybe 50 mil to be able to get that to slide in. So it's not a lot that I've got to spread her legs, but she's definitely got to come apart for me to be able to get that in. All right, so I got no idea whether this is going to work, but here's the plan. One arm of the frame is hooked up to the front tire on the cruiser. The second arm on the frame is hooked up to this bollard. So my theory is by tightening these straps, I should be able to spread these arms, up the frame apart enough to get that in. I'm going to try the other side. Let's get our cross member, see whether she fits. Not quite. I got another hmm, 15 mil or so to go. Make sure I get this around the right way. Because the frame's sitting upside down right now. Oh, that fits. You freaking beauty. Here's the challenge that I've got at the moment. The one outside edge of the cross member fits or is sandwiched in between these two bits of frame rail. And there's not quite enough clearance in there to allow it to slide in. So I've got to bend these bits of frame rail up marginally to allow that to slide in. Not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet, but that's what I got to do. 
So I just got a pry bar and levered up those bits of frame horn to get this cross member to slide in between them and it's actually worked. So that cross member is sitting in place now about where it needs to be but now I've got to close her legs back up about that 50 mil or so that I've spread them because it is kind of wedged in there at the moment. So I'll put the strap around both frame rails and see whether I can use the reverse direction and pull them back together. Looks like it's working. They are pulling together. I might need a stronger strap, but let's see how far this gets us. All right, I'm back to living the Jesus out of it with a hammer. And I can get my bolts to start. So that's awesome. That's this side. I still got to do the other side, of course. But hey, that's some progress. That puppy is mounted now. And that only took a little bit of gentle persuasion with a knockometer and a couple of these straps to spread the frame rails and to pull them back in. Have a look at that, would you? That is sensational and much, much stronger than the original FJ45. Sweet. Well done, Billy McKinnon. Love your work. Let's drag out the MIG and get this sorted out. Now I've got each of these three welds dressed up and the next step will be to hit this with a bit of etch primer designed to just stop any potential surface rust before I can actually paint it with two pack chassis black. So what I've got here are all of the McKinnon Cruiser bits and pieces for the LS mounts and for the transmission cross member mounts as well as some old cruiser pieces that I have sandblasted. Now it's not the ideal day to be painting today because it's wet and rainy out but this is all bare steel and I just don't want to take the chance of this stuff sitting bare and getting some surface rust on it. So I'm going to coat it all in a quick coat of etch primer. Before I shoot this, I'm going to go over it completely with some wax and grease remover. mix up our paint. I'm going with just a 2K matte black. And of course what 2K means is that you've got to use hardener with it. And these paint cups make it so bloody easy. So the instructions telling me that I need two parts of paint to one part of hardener. And you go into this two to one section on the cup. You got a one to one section, a two to one, a three to one. Anyway, I want two to one. If I want 400 mil of paint, you go to line A with your paint line B with your hardener and line C either 10% or 20% for your thinners. Simple as. I'm going to mix up 600 mil so I'm going to go to this A line here, that B line and that C line. Alright that's all mixed up. Now I've just got a Iwata gun We'll load that up and we'll start shooting some paint. If you want to be real pedantic, you'd be using a strainer here. And I do have some strainers on the shelf. But I am spraying the chassis and I'm not that fussed. If I get a little bit of blob here or there.
So our frame is all painted on this side now. I'll let that flash off for 24 hours. We'll flip the frame over and I'll do the top side. But I must say I'm pretty happy with the way that looks at the moment. All these smaller bits are finished as well. They came up pretty good too. I'm used to painting panels and things like that, so when you start dealing with big pieces of steel like this, it's pretty hard to get it wrong, really. Well, here's a bloody annoyance. I got the frame flipped over to do the top side of it, and a bloody scud of a shower come through. And now the entire frame is soaked down. So I'll have to wait until she completely dries out before I can go ahead and finish off the top of this thing. While I'm waiting for my suspension to arrive, just thought I'd do a little bit of an assembly on a few bits and pieces on the cruiser frame. Starting with these fish plates and tow hooks. Now look at that tow hook, she's come up beautiful. That was the one that I sandblasted earlier and painted with the chassis black. I love working with clean, fresh bolts, clean, fresh paint, no grease, no grime, no shit. That's all behind me now. How good does that look? You might think I'm a little bit strange to get excited about something like that, but I love this stuff. There's our chassis all blasted and I've started doing a little bit of reassembly to it. Just small things like the bump stops here for example on the diff, the tow hooks up here on the front, the steering idler box, and the tow bar on the rear. Well, we've obviously got to put some suspension in this thing so that I can get the diffs under it. Now the suspension that came off of it is crusty and rooted and I'm just going to throw it out. In fact, this is what it looks like here. I placed an order for ARB 2 inch lift suspension back in January. It's now March and they tell me that it'll be available in April. So I've got a few weeks to wait before I get that suspension to allow me to get the diffs underneath of here. Once I get the diffs under it, we can get into the really exciting stuff. And that is sitting inside of these boxes. And for any red-blooded humanoid out there watching this, this has got to get your pulse up, really, doesn't it? Supercharged 6.2 liter LSA. She's going in between the frame rails of that chassis in an upcoming video. If that sounds like something you want to follow along on, hit that subscribe button because it won't be too long before we get this in the hoist and we plunk it between the frame rails. Thanks for watching, everybody. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I hope you've learned something or at least had a little bit of a chuckle or enjoyed what you saw. We'll catch you next time. Keep the shiny side up. Bye now. Bye.